Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host, Grandma Gail. Grandma, what is new? Well, I think it was election day for the primaries today, so did you go out and vote? Yeah, I went uptown to vote where I grew up on the Upper East Side because that's where I was registered. And I was saying to my mom, I was like, oh, I wonder if I should change my address so next time I can vote downtown where I live now. And she was like, you should be dreaming big for yourself. Like maybe next time you vote, you're going to be like in Palm Beach or California or on the Upper East Side with a husband. So you might as well not change your address. I was like, good point. That's a good thinking. Your mom is always one step ahead. <laughs> she's, like, her, she's, like her thinking. Yeah, she's even more like that than you are. So it's funny. Um, otherwise, really just keep, I keep dating. Um, well, that's a good thing. You want to keep the economy of New York going. That's oh my gosh, I bet I contribute. Well, no, I don't contribute. The men that I go out with contribute <laughs> a right. good amount to the economy of New York. <laughs> All right, that's good. We need it. We need it. New York is struggling. It was actually funny. One guy that I went out with recently just texted me and was like so I told my mom about your podcast and I was like oh okay I mean I've only gone on literally two dates with you but that's interesting and he texted um he he sent me a screenshot of what she said started listening to the podcast and I really like it so far really cute idea not even done with the first one but but I'm 100% aligned with her grandma and she sounds like a bit like your sister as she likes creative types you might be a good balance yeah I just thought that one was funny Um, at least his mother will like you that's true (laughs) that's very important in a relationship but let's get to this week we have a really exciting guest on Her name is Alana Dunn, and she is the host of the podcast called Seeing Other People, which used to be a podcast um, that she started with this guy who I know well, who um, we'll get into that, but they went on a few dates and then realized they didn't have a romantic connection, but actually would be great podcast co-host together and that's how that got started but we'll ask her about all of it that sounds good that sounds interesting today yes and she used to work for hinge so she's going to tell us what makes a good profile on a dating app and the statistics that you want to know about like what does good what doesn't so it'll be an interesting conversation okay let's jump into it kim we are here with alana dunn the host of seeing other people it's an amazing podcast thanks for joining us Thank you for having me. I am so stoked to be here. Let's start with how old are you, where you're from, and your current relationship status. So I am 26. I'm almost 27, but we don't need to talk about that. I'm 26. Um, I am from Westchester, New York. I live in Manhattan, and I am in a relationship, which is still so weird to say. So let's talk about seeing other people. We have a really funny connection, how you and I met, which we'll get into, but talk about how the podcast came to be. Yeah. So I used to work for Hinge. I ran all their social and content and I decided that one thing that we were really trying to do is let people kind of learn and and understand that they're not alone in what they're going through in dating. So I was making little like 60 second video clips talking about different dating topics. And the more I made them, the more people were writing in saying that they were helping. And I was like, wow, like these are helping people. How can we help people even more? Like, how can we expand on the short form content and get into deeper conversations and cover more topics? And I was like, I want to start a podcast. And they were like, okay, go start a podcast. And I was like, wait, really? Cool. And I was like, you know what? I want to have an older male co-host so that we can kind of debate different topics and provide people with like different perspectives. So the idea was that like girls would tune in to hear Jonah's perspective and, or to hear the guy's perspective and guys would tune in to hear my perspective. And so they were like, okay, great. Do you have anyone in mind? And I was like, oh, you know what? I think I do. And so Jonah Feingold and I met on Hinge and went on a few dates starting August, 2019. And we definitely hit it off from the beginning. But after a few dates, I realized I wasn't over my ex and needed more time and just like, wasn't ready to really like someone. So I cut it off with him. We ended up staying friends, but the whole time on our dates, we would just talk about like modern dating and everything that went along with that. And I was like, wow, this guy would be the perfect co-host. So I kind of hit him up out of nowhere and was like, what do you think of this? And he was like, absolutely. So then dating sucks was born, which was a hinge podcast. And 
Uh, it was great. We did a one season, 12 episodes. It was so awesome and incredible and such a great experience. And then, um, I left hinge in November of 2020 and in January of 2021, Jonah and I birthed seeing other people, which is basically like dating sex 2.0. I want to ask you something for people who don't know what hinge is, just give us yes. a little synopsis. Cause there's a whole group of people out there that have never been on hinge. Don't know what hinge You're, is meaning and whatever. you and your friends. Well, anybody over <laughs> perhaps 40 years old, doesn't know what hinge is. Right. <laughs> so hinge is a dating app their con their kind of like thing is that they're the dating app designed to be deleted they really actually want you to get into relationships and get off of the app and um i really always believed that it was one of the apps that i i felt most like safe and most comfortable on because as opposed to other apps where you just like swipe on pictures of people you actually have to fill out a whole profile and answer questions right. about yourself and really provide context as to who you are so that People are making, yes, they're still making snap judgments and these quick decisions about if they want to go out with you or talk to you or not, but it, it, at least it's based on something more than just photos of you. Okay. So I always thought Hinge was kind of like the best one out there. Even before I started working there, it was the only one that I actually went on dates from. Okay, wait. So backtracking, a few questions. One, when you said to Jonah, hey, we don't, like, I'm not over my ex, whatever. I know this is the story we're telling. Do you truly feel like if he was the one for you, like you wouldn't have felt that way and you would have been like, I'm over my ex, like this is the guy, or do you think it really was just timing? It was, it really was timing. I don't know, obviously, like if had the timing been better, had it worked out with me and Jonah, obviously like I know him very, very, very well now. And I, I don't think that we were meant right. to be together, but I do think it would have progressed and at least like, I think, I think we would have, had a really good time together for a while, you know? Um, but at the time I really was not in a good place. Like Jonah was the first person I went on a date with after my ex, it was like my attempt to dip my toes back mm -hmm. into the dating world. And I did not expect to have a connection with somebody. And like, I was crying about my ex before the date and then going home and crying about my ex. after. So you clearly date. weren't and over your ex. <laughs> I was not over my ex and I was not over my, it, it took a while after that too. But I do think that that step of realizing that I could have feelings for somebody else, right. though I was not ready for it was very important for me in my yeah. process of moving on. I think that's a great point. And so the way we know each other is through Jonah, because I also mm -hmm. met him on a dating app, not hinge um, on Raya. And we dated for a little bit and then I kind of met you through Instagram and I told you this when I met yeah. you, but I was like, Alana has such a good like presence. She's so friendly. So I wasn't as worried. I was like, okay, Jonah has a podcast with the girl he used to date. I could go one route, which is my normal route of like be jealous and psychotic or be like this girl like is so nice and like, isn't trying to steal him. And that's very much, I feel like it's, it was a friendship thing and a co-host thing. And I can see yes. that like chemistry with you guys. And I was never like, nervous or annoyed about it, but I feel like I just think it's so funny that this is like the way that this came to be. I know. Should we compare notes? I know. <laughs> no, I but I, I be advisable. Well, I'm in Jonah's <laughs> corner. I don't even know Jonah, but don't compare it. You notes. met him. I know. I met him casually. Oh, I don't, uh, but Whoa. I don't think you should compare notes. Well, you also met him <laughs> date two. I, I think I don't so. Know. It was really wow. early, like because zero to a hundred. Well, you know, in COVID, like living with family and whatever. Um, so yeah. that happened really quickly. But yeah, um, what I what I was going to say, though, is I do remember I like I, I remember having you in mind when we were recording those initial seeing other people episodes, because although they didn't come out until January, we recorded some in like October, November, because we were just like so excited about it. And that was a point where we were still playing off of the whole like, oh, like we've had feelings for each other. So like, let's be flirty and like, let's pretend that like maybe we still like each other. And I yeah. was like, like I did think I had you in mind, even though we had never spoken, I never met you. And I was just like, I don't like it, it. I felt like icky about it, you know? Well, I was not offended. I also don't think I listened to the episode. So maybe I would have been if I heard yeah. it, <laughs> but like, let's try to like expand this for people who aren't not that many people date people who are in the podcasting world. I feel like we're in a very specific situation here. What about yes. for people who are dating someone who has like that girl best friend that they're always hanging out with. Like, how do you not feel insecure about that girl? 
And does that girl always have the best intentions or do you think sometimes they really are like trying to slide it? You know, I think it obviously depends on each situation and the history there. I think it, it, it can be tough, but it also can be tough for that girl. You know, if it, if that girl is best friends with the guy and the guy starts dating someone new, then like they're kind of losing their best friend to mm-hmm. another girl. So it's like, of course, there's going to be this instant tension there. And of course, all the guy wants is for them to be best friends and to get along, but you can't really tell a girl who they can and can't be friends with, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of movies have been done about this topic, including something (laughs) just recently with Julia Roberts that I think I saw on Netflix. Wait, that's not recent. You mean my best friend's wedding? Yeah. That's not recent. That's the 80s. the same story? (laughs) It's very, very common. It's very common, I think. Similar. That was she. Did you see that, Alana? A while ago. Yeah, I think that was basically like she her best friend was a guy. He right. was getting married right. and, and she, she really loved him. And well, she thought she loved him. Yeah. And right. she realized that it wasn't he was meant to be with the other girl. But yeah. I think it's very, you know, it's very hard to have three in a relationship, no matter who yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really what that is. It's, you know, it could be a best friend. It could be no sexual tension between the, the fellow and the girl. But when the third person comes in, they they are jealous and um, yeah. It's, it's a difficult spot to be in on, for all of them, for everybody. So. Here's what I also think is tricky where like, let's say you, let's say you started dating Jonah or let's get off of Jonah. Let's get let's off say Jonah. You start, <laughs> Sam. Let's say let's you just, like, Sam. Let's say Alana, I just Sam. got over him. Let's not bring this up again. <laughs> let's say you start dating Sam and I, Sam and I are like, we go way back. Right. And here's the thing is like, Sam and I have history, but Mm. is Sam going to tell you that? Are you going to assume that we do? Are you going to ask him if we do? Is he going to tell you the truth and at the risk of you being upset about it? Or is he going to lie and then be holding on to that lie for a Mm. while? Because I've actually been in both situations and, and I had a situation with a very good guy friend of mine who I did have history with and he started dating somebody new and we, we would talk every single day. Like we would help each other through everything. Like we really were like best friends and he started dating someone new and he kind of dropped off the face of the earth for me. And that was really hard. And I thought it was just because like, he was so obsessed with her and whatever. I'm like, fine. But Mm -hmm. when they broke up, he immediately came like crying to me. Like I literally held his hand through the breakup and he was like, I made a comment. I was like, I'm obviously so sad for you, but it is nice to have my friend back. And he was like, I know I feel terrible about that. Like the truth is I never told her about our history. And then like from the beginning and then it like time just went on and it felt like more awkward that I didn't. So then every time I was talking to you, I felt like I was doing something wrong, even though like we're just friends. And so I just never did anything. So I could just like never bring you up or talk to you. And I was like, oh, Nice. Yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, he, he made a mistake yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, I think he should have, I don't know if, this is the thing, should he have said to the girl, by the way, Alana and I have history, or should the girl have thought to ask? Like, why would you bring it up and make it awkward? I feel like as the girlfriend, if someone had a really good guy friend, I'd be like, hey, so by the way, like, was there ever, anything ever romantic there? Or like, you know what I mean? Just sussing yeah. tell Or would he tell the truth though? That's the whole problem. Yeah. But then again, yeah. like I have childhood guy friends who I'm so close with who I would never. And if a girl was like, I'm worried about Kim, I'd be like, please don't ever be. This is my brother. <laughs> so it's like every relationship right. is super different. OK, so back to seeing other people. We're in a new era now. You're doing it on your own. Um, yeah. Are you nervous? Are you excited? What is that going to look like? I definitely was nervous at first. Um, I was happy that I had like, kind of a push in that direction to do it on my own. Um, but I was definitely nervous. I was like, I've never hosted a podcast on my own before. Yes, I've been a guest on a podcast. Yes, I've co-hosted a podcast, but I've never really done it by myself, not having anyone to lean on or to help carry the conversation. And I kind of decided I was going to throw myself into it. And I booked like five recordings in one week so that I would just like power through the week. And then by the end of it, I'd have no excuses. Like I've done it. I, I did it. I can do this. And after the first one, I was like, this is amazing. I love this. I'm so happy. But I think the bigger thing for me being on my own is that now, anytime I have an idea, I can just run with it. You know, I don't have to like check it out, work through. Yeah. (laughs) I don't have to have someone else like suss it out. I don't have to really like 
make sure that the other person agrees with me on it. Not to say that before there were disagreements or anything, but just it, it's nice that like I can have an idea and be like, okay, I'm going to try this next week. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, the future of seeing other people, I'm very excited about um, because a few weeks ago I had an idea to kind of do something a little bit different than most dating podcasts. And that's to actually bring listeners on anonymously to talk about what they've been through, what they've struggled with, what they're currently going through and what they've learned from it, what they wish they knew when they started going through this specific experience and struggle and um, really to help everyone else who's going through something. Because obviously dating is really hard. If it was easy, we wouldn't have these podcasts. Um, and a lot of experiences and a lot of things that people go through in dating feel really isolating and, and you feel really alone and like you're not okay. And you're the only person who's ever felt this way. And that's just not true. There's like everyone. What was your major everything. in college? May I ask? Were you a psych major? What are you? Is that what you were going to guess? No, I was, I'm just curious if you were. <laughs> no, I studied television, radio, film, and music business. Okay. I was actually going to go okay. into the music industry. So a right. little bit different. A little um, bit different, but this is interesting. No, but it's amazing yeah. now that you have this project, you can do whatever you want and run with it. Like my business partner, Grandma Gail, is extremely <laughs> difficult to work now. I feel like we're good because <laughs> it's it's easy with like, family. I mean, it's easy and hard, but I feel like it's easy because you kind of are, you let me just like, I let you do what you want, do it since I have no idea what we're doing. Um, so Alana, as you said, you used to work for hinge. I want to use your like expertise here and talk about dating app profiles and the things that work well and the things that do not. So we had this idea that you could run through some things with us, um, that are either successful or not successful on the apps and Grandma, you can kind of guess what you think works and doesn't work, what gets the most matches and what. From my, from my point of view. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no right, there's no, no right or wrong. There are answers. right or wrong answers. There are right or wrong. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I hope I get some of them right. <laughs> I believe in start? you. Who's going to start it? Alana has the, oh, Alana the Okay. So oh, I'm going to, I'm going to say different elements that might be on somebody's profile. Um, relating to photos and you're going to guess if they perform generally better or generally worse than others. Okay. We're on. I'm ready. Right. Okay. A photo from a few years ago. Well, that would be, how do they know it's a few years ago? Because when they, let's say they go on their Instagram and they see that they don't even look like that anymore. Oh, well, that's not good. Am I right? Yeah, correct. That's, that's <laughs> actually something that a lot me. of <laughs> people often like do go to really old photos because they think like, oh, well, I looked really good here. Who cares if it was six years ago? And it's like, no, people aren't stupid. They're going to find out either when they put like three minutes into stalking you or when they meet you. Okay. So people think it's a good move, but it's actually not. Okay. Um, Agree with okay. that. Okay. A black and white photo. Well, that's very artsy. I, I sort of like it. I don't know what, what Wait, should I guess too? Cause I don't know. Yeah. I, you I shook your head. I don't think it would do well at all. That's strange. Why? Well, I, I, I actually know. think I actually think I have one now that I'm thinking about it, but I don't think that, well, that if you're a real photographer, you take it black and white. I, I okay. sort of think it's nice. I'm going to say no, I'm going to okay. say no, they're not real photographers. They're using an Instagram filter. Oh, all right. Well, I don't know that about that because I've never been on Instagram, but I'm going to say yes. It's all right. I, Gail, I like that you went with your gut. You're correct. Black and oh, white photos perform for Gail, none so for well. <laughs> Yay, yep. we're going to be very competitive here. <laughs> um, okay. If you are a girl, a photo standing alone. That's all right. If you're a girl, I mean, who are you supposed to stand with? Your mother? Um, your father? Or like your friends? No, I, I think if you, I think it's perfectly fine to stand alone. You've got confidence. Yeah, I think that alone probably does best because then you're like being compared to other girls. Well, remember like the duff or whatever that it's like, yeah, basically like if you stand, if you're kind of ugly and you stand, oh, that's mean. Wait, wait. See, those are mean girls. I no, don't go into that. No, no, There's no, a it's, whole movie about it. The duff yeah. means designated ugly fat friend. Oh no. So basically like if you stand around girls that are uglier, like it makes you look prettier. All right. I would, uh, that I have no idea. I only have nice looking friends. So I don't <laughs> think about that, but I think it's all right to stand alone. Yeah. You're just saying that because they're all going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And every single one of them will listen. 
<laughs> um, okay. Who is if right you or are, wrong? You're both right. Uh, oh, okay. wait, no. Standing, no. standing alone. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good good um, okay. A, a photo with a parent. Uh, we saw remember when you were swiping through you were like why do all these boys have pictures with their mothers and i was like because they're jewish right it was their bar mitzvah <laughs> pictures right <laughs> it was some it was some family event I, I don't love standing with mothers that to me i i don't mind standing with the dog or the cat mm. but standing with the mother sort of i don't like it personally. child childish behavior i think yeah they they perform really well um oh, standing with a parent shows that you are like a family person. Oh, it, okay. uh, it also gives the person a look at like where you come from and just, it's like a little whole. The bar mitzvah fi- picture was right on, t- on target. Okay. I don't like it though. I feel like I don't want to think about dating your parents. I want to think about dating you. Well, but I guess psychologically people say, if you can get along with your parents, yeah. you might get along with me. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. 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 Let's give one more. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, if you are a girl and you are looking away. Oh, that's not, that doesn't bode well. That, that means that you're not even interested in, 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 in getting involved with anyone that's too self-centered. Nope. I'm, okay. I don't like it. I'm going to say the opposite. I think it makes you look like cool and hard to get. Okay. And point goes to Kim. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Wait, was there anything? Cause I thought these were interesting on like closed mouth smile versus open mouth smile. Yeah. Well, so the interesting one about the looking away. So for girls looking away is better, but for guys looking at the camera is better, which is interesting. That's interesting. So the smiling one is interesting. So smiling with or without teeth, there's one for each gender. What do you think? Who, who gets to smile with teeth and who shouldn't? Well, I, somebody who has good dental work should definitely smile with it. But I think that's the girl, true. <laughs> I think the girl can smile without and the guy should smile with teeth. I don't know uh, that. I really don't know. I agree. It's the opposite. Uh Oh, wait, girls should smile with teeth and guys should smile with no teeth. Yep. That's interesting. OK. And is there a reason behind these two things or is it just what people like? It's, it, it's what performs better. OK. Statistically. All right. OK. Yeah. All right. I just feel like every girl is like closed mouth smile. I'm going to be like trendy well, we're wrong well that's mm. why that's the thing it's like if you're i guess if you're a girl and you're doing that closed mouth smile it's not really showing like how you are when you're genuinely happy right yeah no actually i had a guy friend who looked at one of my apps once and all of mine are closed mouth smile just because i for some reason i just that's my go to like and i don't have that many pictures with normal smile and he said that to me he was like show how you actually smile but i never changed it cuz like i don't trust him <laughs> but good to know. Wow. Okay. So otherwise with dating app conversations, um, are there certain things that perform well, like to slide in with, like, do you always want to respond to a prompt versus a photo? Like, do you want to make it personal? Do you just say hi? Like, what are some tips or, um, things that you can share? Definitely do not just say, Hey, or hi, or yo, or sup. Um, that's not going to get you far because that's just basically saying like, I think you're hot, but I don't actually know what to say to you. Mm. Um, so that's not good. Um, that also puts a lot of pressure on the other person to say something other than like, Hey, um, do not slide in with pickup lines. People do not like pickup lines. And I've actually run a bunch of like polls and stuff over the years from different accounts about pickup lines. And it's like 90% of people are like, stop, stop with the pickup lines. Like I no guess matter how funny, funny you think you are. Right. Yeah. But everybody's sick of it. Yeah. I, th- I think people, yep. even- wait, was there a pickup line that you heard a lot in the fifties and sixties that you could think of? Like, I don't think we ever even thought about being picked up. I mean, <laughs> I, I think we would never have gone out with somebody who picked us up. That was not, that was no, but it's like, at a, let's say you're at a bar and someone, we walked. weren't at bars. Oh. That was not, that's, that, that's a set that starts in the seventies. Right. Forget that. I they were, in, they weren't going bar. to a pregame at an apartment yes. and then going to the gym. <laughs> exactly. In the seventies, I was pushing a baby carriage. I have no idea what the pickups were. And I don't think our generation did that. That we were fixed up legitimately by family. But if you weren't or fixed up, like you don't know anyone who's just like, um, getting, 
a no. cup of tea and then I'm like no. what if what do people do they like sit and then some man walks over and is like excuse me I couldn't help but notice <laughs> well I'm sure that happened and that would be very romantic it but I don't be. know anybody who did That's that fine burst my bubble my my dad asked my mom if she would wanted to dance with him they were yes, at cute. Uh, a uja fundraiser exactly those were the way people met each other they weren't picked up on at a bar <laughs> that was just not acceptable so is that how they yeah. met yeah that's how they met so and here i am that's right and it worked uh, yeah. so what do your parents yeah. think about one like you talking about dating for your profession and two about like the guys that you've dated in the past <laughs> I don't think so. None of us ever like thought that this was the career path I'd go down. So I think we all were kind of just like, okay, this is bizarre, but sure. Um, this is what Alana does now. I think they were definitely surprised to hear me like talk so openly about certain aspects of my life. Cause uh, like dating has been really hard and a pretty negative experience for me. I've had some like pretty bad relationship experiences. And so for me to actually like talk about those when like, I wouldn't really even like talk about them with my parents. I think they were surprised, but for some reason I found it to be a lot easier to talk into a microphone about it. Um, even if thousands of people were going to listen rather than to like have an, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody in my life about it, but yeah, much is, less personal and, it, and it's very cathartic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then what they think of the guys I've dated. Well, I asked them, I had a segment with them when I was at hinge and it was called Alana in the house. Cause it, quarantine had just started. Yeah. And so I would just like ambush them, whatever they were doing and like ask them a dating question each time. And one time I asked, why am I single? And my dad said selection. Mm -hmm. So too, too fussy, too fussy. The girls today are too fussy. Not, not that I was too fussy that I was just picking like really bad people. Oh, oh all right. Oh, that it was too. like, I had a problem selecting the good ones and um, mm -hmm. so when I brought my now boyfriend home to meet them, their feedback was like, he's very normal. That's, <laughs> That's a great good. thing. Normal I'm is like, good. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh no. That, I'm very um, big into yeah. normal. That's one of Gail's saying normal is good because I, yeah. I let, well, I'll put that question on you. Why am I single? Well, I believe because you're looking for the abnormal and the normal is good. And that's you, you can't find it. Normal is boring. No, actually, you know what? I, great merch idea. You in the front, normal is good. Me in the back, normal is boring. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. That's okay, amazing. We'll, be, we'll have to think of that t-shirt. I'll, like I'll wear it. I will okay, wear it. Good. I mean, I think it depends on on like normal versus like weird or not normal. Because I always thought that I was not looking to date somebody who was like normal. I wanted mm -hmm. like a super specific type of person with a super specific career path. And um, those were not like the normal people. Like my friends would always laugh about it because they're like, why can't you just like date somebody normal who works in finance? Right. Like in Midtown. And I'm like, well, that's so boring. But like, I am now dating, I guess, like what's considered <laughs> to be a normal guy and he's great. Mm -hmm. and, and your career doesn't works. define you. Like a lot of the time, I think you're like, oh, there's with someone, they're like uh, an athlete or an artist. And you're like, they're different, but like you could be different in ways that don't have to do with your career and still, and yeah. like, I think that's a misconception a lot of people have. Where did you meet your current boyfriend? On Hinge. Oh my gosh, this hinge, you're going to have to give a donation to them at the end. <laughs> it was your first job and now you've got a nice boyfriend from them. That's lovely. Yeah. yeah. And I, I will say it's a really nice, like full circle thing because I, I matched with him on hinge after I was no longer working there. And, and most people would ask me like, oh, so now that you're like not working there, are you like going to stop using it? Like, cause it, it didn't like, end well, whatever. And I was like, no, like I still believe that like Hinge is the best dating app. And if mm -hmm. like there's anybody that I'm, if I'm going to meet somebody on a dating app, it's going to be on Hinge. Oh, it's a very uh, nice story. You could do an ad for them, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've done many. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure. Um, but wait, real quick, going back to what you, the original question about like what works with like opening lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely. If you like actually want to have a conversation with somebody. If you want to match with somebody, send a comment. It doesn't matter if it's on a prompt or a photo, but it just shows that you actually paid attention, that you're actually interested in something that they said or that they showed you. Because if you think about it, like, I mean, you hope that people are putting thought and time into their profiles and into their messages. And if you send a comment, it just shows that like, Hey, I actually like spent more than three seconds on your profile. I'm actually interested in this thing about you. Let's talk about it. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good advice. I totally agree. I think there are levels. Like sometimes I think responding to one of my prompts with a specific question about it is great. But I remember the other day, someone was like, I listened to the first three episodes of your podcast and da da da. I'm like, I haven't even said hi no. yet. That's no, no, too no, much no, no, commitment. No, 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 no. This might be a generational difference. When we're talking about starting these conversations on apps, does it matter? Do you think if like the guy is the one to start the conversation or the girl? I do not think it matters. I also think, I mean, obviously, but what we're going to ignore Bumble in this conversation yeah. because um, on Bumble, you can only start the conversation if you are a girl. Um, but on any other app, I think it does not matter. It should not matter. I do not think that girls should be waiting around for mm-hmm. the guy to say something. And what I've learned from my guy friends, cause I'll always ask them this is I'll be like, is it bad if I text first? Is it bad if I ask them on a date? Cause I personally am not someone who like feels like I need to wait to be courted. Like I don't, I know obviously like a lot of people do, and that's totally fine. And I respect that. But for me, I don't want to like sit around just like waiting. Um, and every time all of my guy friends say like, no, it's hot. We like that. Like be forward, ask us out. Like that never happens. So if you do it, you automatically stand out and you're automatically like viewed differently than everyone else. Did you do that with your, with your relationship now or did, what did he make the first move? So he actually messaged me. He like sent two messages and for some reason I didn't answer. And then he like okay. followed up over a week later and was like, so I figured I'd try this again. Okay. <laughs> so he persisted, which is really the nicest thing I can imagine. Wait, I have two, yeah. oh, so many things. One that follow up text sometimes really can turn me off. Like if I forget to respond and it might not even be personal, sometimes I just like open it and then forget. Yeah. And then yeah. someone's like me checking in again. I'll be like, you have no life. Goodbye. Yeah. Unless obviously like sometimes it d- actually, I matched with someone recently who I just never responded. And then he found me through TikTok and we ended up going mm-hmm. out and like that was like, I'm glad he followed up. Cause I honestly didn't remember that. Like I didn't the first time. So it does depend, but like, so would you recommend for someone to send that follow up text normally, or like, is there more to it? Here's the thing is that I guess I agree. Sometimes I'm like super like worked out about it. I'm like, please stop. I didn't answer you, but you have nothing to lose by sending it Mm -hmm. because either again, they're not going to answer. And then you'll know for sure. Like, okay, I'm going to stop. Like I I shot my shot. I tried my best here, but the best case scenario is that they do respond. But grandma, so I guess going back to then with you, with your friends who are single, do they want to make the first move ever? No, I don't think so. I think our generation didn't make the first move. Mm-hmm. I think it, it's yeah. too difficult. Do you think then, but now Especially there's... for people who were married or in relationships, mm-hmm. they they need to have the man be the more uh, aggressive, mm-hmm. if that's the word. Um, but, you know, uh, there are a load of women out there and a load of men that really want company and, and would like to know how to do it. And what Alana's saying could help them as well. So it's very interesting. Yeah. But I'm going to have them listen to your app, <laughs> to your Woo. podcast. My app. <laughs> Not your app. Not your app. I'm I, an app I promoted now. you now. I promoted you to an app. I meant your podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause I know now they're single in 2021. It is a different time. Maybe if they aren't finding success, they might have to make the first move. Well, I think it's tough to change a, yeah. a change a person's personality yeah. after yeah. so many years of yeah. uh, or the dynamic. That yeah, the dynamic. Well, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think if I was like put in a time machine and, and back in like the 1950s, 60s, and I had to like just sit there looking pretty, waiting for someone to approach me. Like, That's what you did. I don't think I'd I don't think I'd be able to do that. Cause like what if I saw somebody at, like across the I don't room, room. Temp- <laughs> room. <laughs> across across the Shabbat services right. room and was like, Ooh, that one. Um, but then like this one came over, I'd be like, mm-hmm, but that one, and like yeah. that one wasn't coming over. Like I would stand up and walk over cause I'm me. Well, right. that's good. That's the, that's the good thing that's changed. Well, I guess that other guy wasn't coming over for a reason. Now I feel like maybe guys don't approach you for because girls can, but if you knew your role as a man was to approach the girl you were interested in and you weren't doing it, that means they weren't interested, right? Correct. Like, Correct. cause now if I went to a bar and someone Damn. didn't walk over to me, I wouldn't be like, oh, it's cause they don't like me. I would just be like, they're you know, there. 
Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Okay, I want to wrap up the episode by asking about your relationship. We talked about with your parents, but with your grandma, is there any advice that she ever gave you about dating? Okay, so my dad's mom actually passed away when I was maybe like six or so. So I never got into that with her. Um, and my mom's mom, unfortunately, did also pass a few years ago. But my my grandma actually on my mom's side, who I, I did get to spend most of my life to this point with, um, her husband, my grandpa passed away when my mom was in her twenties, my mom was in college and he passed mm-hmm. away. And, um, so that was like, oh, that was a long time ago. And she went on to live like for almost like 30, 40 more years. Um, and she did not date a single other person. Right. She that was very much move. what it was in those yeah. days. Yes. But I think like learning that for, about her, even though it was obviously like a different time, I, I thought that was really special where it's like, you do want to find somebody that makes you so like fulfilled and happy that you can't like the thought of being with somebody else just isn't like, it's not something that you'd ever want. Um, so I thought that was really special. And I think the one thing I learned from her overall is that it's like family is the most important thing ever, which again, for me goes back to like really looking for somebody who I can envision starting a family with and Mm -hmm. going through like the ups and downs of that with. So I think I'm really glad that I got to have those two takeaways. I love that. Alana, this was awesome. I'm so happy you came and joined us on excuse my grandma. Thank you so much much for having me. (laughs) And I can't wait to do this again very, very soon for seeing other people. Yes, we'll be coming on Alana's show as well. So everyone has to listen to that when that comes out. That was another great episode of Excuse My Grandma. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Alana. She was really very nice. She was lovely. And you can follow us on Instagram and on TikTok at Excuse My Grandma. Email in your questions at the email address questions at excusemygrandma.com. And uh, we have some exciting interviews coming up in the next few weeks. We'll hope you enjoy. So stay tuned. Bye.